Okay, folks, Mr. Bellion here. Just going to review a couple things. Uh, this is coming to the end of our unit in grade 9, the 3D modeling composition and layout. You will see that we have our sketches here. And this is the end result, obviously, right here. And I'm, as I'm hovering, as opposed to my hand hovering over. Okay, so you guys seen this. And I'm going to talk about composition. Once you have all these elements figured out, you have all that your sketch idea, you practice sketching the environment, and you basically built your 3D primitives, your version of this, that's cool. So now what we want to do is study um, how we're going to put it together. You went through these drawings yourself. You made your own. Here's a sign. Back here was the snowman and a bunch of cylinders, spheres, and so on to make all these um, elements. And I'm just going to hide this. This is a review. This was a sign. And lastly, over here, we did the little chalet, as I call it, the shed, the small chalet in the, uh, for winter. Okay, now we're going to talk about composition and layout. And it's really easy for me to say, hey, by the way, you have to pay attention to the rule of thirds. What does that mean? Okay, so let's just start this right now. Okay, so I've got my pencil here, and rule of thirds is quite simple, but there's a lot to it, not just rule of thirds. So I'm just going to draw just a, um, a frame here, and let's pretend that this is our shot, is within this frame. Okay, and basically the rule of third says to you, just divide your page into thirds, okay, and you vertically and horizontally believe it or not. Here it is. Okay, so roughly what people do is say, oh, by the way, you should just make sure you have something important in this zone or in this zone okay so you're not you're basically not doing this okay so I'm just gonna do freehand drawing here so imagine you've gone on a trip here's you uh, your family members and somebody else over here and there's something going on in the background and normally you're in the middle okay so that's good for a focus shot okay so if you're emphasizing something that's fine but in the future what I want you to do is I'm gonna sketch another version of the same picture you're on a trip. Here's your uh, one of your parents, uh, sibling over here, and another person here. So basically what I did is I moved the people in the shot to one-third over so that I could see what's happening over here. So basically maybe there's a pathway here that comes across a nice mountain or something, the sun coming up or the moon coming down. So you're really visualizing other things that are going on. You are the focus, but you're also in view of other things, okay? So that's the goal. So this is kind of theoretical. And there's also going to be things like this. So you see there's a background, there's a sky, there's a moon, maybe a little mountain here or a hillside, road coming. They're in the foreground, this is in the middle ground, and the sky is in the background. So I'm going to explain all these things throughout um, shots that I can appreciate, okay? Here we go. All right, I'm going to start with rule of thirds. As you can see right now, here's our shot. I'm just going to reduce it for you guys. So you will see now, this is one of my favorite movies, of course. It's Tangled. And, uh, you know, right here. It's a Disney movie. All right, I think it's one of the best animated movies of all time. Okay, so you can see the eye contact here. Um, it's, it's very powerful. And as well, uh, we've got one on one side, one on the other. They're not in the middle and they're framed beautifully. One third and one third, okay? So I'll just bring you another another uh, example here. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity so I could draw over it. Maybe something, uh, a color that I would never use. Here we go, uh, a bright green. So notice now uh, the, eye, the eye movements. This is very, oops, my apologies. Let me just change this. Never draw on the layer, folks. Okay, so I'm going to lock this, go on top. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity. Here we go. Make my brush uh, pencil thicker. So notice a couple things. Obviously, rule of thirds here and here. Okay. What's amazing is that notice that the eye movement right here. Okay. Right here. This is kind of cool. Pixar is very good at this. Uh, not good. They're amazing. What am I saying? Who am I to say that? They're amazing, right? So also notice that there's a depth here in the composition. Okay. And there's an action going on here. There's depth. There's inside here. There's a framing of a space. And there's more going on. So this is loaded. It's a loaded shot. So you guys, just you always have to think of what's in the foreground, what's in the middle ground, and what's in the background. Okay? So we'll look at that in our layout. For example, if I come back here, I have something in my foreground, which is these guys. Background is the sky and the mountain, the mountains, and the trees here, mid-ground, and the little chalet. So there's depth going on. I'm not personally happy with this guy facing that way. I'd rather have the chalet facing towards the um, 
the uh, snowman, which I've actually done in my lessons in class with you guys. So you see I've done another version of this. Wait for it. Yeah, so it's kind of like facing each other. See, also notice this movement. I'm going to get to that in a second. And I'm really rushing. I apologize. Okay, so we'll go to the next shot. Okay. So you're learning about rule of thirds, and you're learning that there's also depth, and you're also learning that movement, okay? So right above here, what do we got here? Look at this, one-third, okay? So we're all looking at these two guys communicating, and notice that they're not the same size, okay? So if I just, there's a size difference, so that's kind of cool. So all our objects, and this is going to make sense in terms of your background with your trees. Notice here, height difference, height difference height difference, height difference, and so on. So what I'm saying to you is some of you in your layouts are doing this in the background. You're laying out the trees out of cone shapes all the same size. See here? What you want to do is have movement. So look at this movement. It's beautiful. Again, it's Pixar. They're masters at this, right? So what we do is we, we bring it down, we go back up, and so on. So you want to have this movement happening in your composition. So there's a lot that uh, uh, you have to think about. There's a lot of thinking going on once you have all your elements modeled. Moving on to the next example. Let's see what else I can find here. Oh, yes. And uh, again, well, look at this. This is kind of like a framing opportunity here. There's something in the front. Um, sorry, I'll just go like this. And Okay, and then this is in the foreground. These guys are in the middle ground, and notice this movement. Look at that. That's movement in your composition, okay? So look, that's beautiful, right? These guys are all looking at each other. That's a classic Pixar move. Lovely. Go on to the next shot, and I'm really rushing. I apologize. We're going to go continue with movement. All right, so I'm going to go above it. So again, watch this. See that? They're all, f like, they're... Look at this. They're all looking, obviously, camera left here. Um, but notice that in the composition, they're not all the same the same height, which is what many of us do in the beginning, right? So we want to avoid that. We want to show movement through our composition. Beautiful depth. Background is the sky. Midground are the buildings. They're in the foreground, okay? FG for foreground. The buildings are midground. And the sky is a background. So you're learning so much in such a short period of time. Okay, I'm going to end it with the word framing. So think about this shot right now. Okay, this is a beautiful shot. Look at this connection here from Tangled. And so what's happening is they're both inside a frame. Think of yourself walking. Oops, sorry, wrong. Wow, how did that work? The layer was locked. Okay, think of yourself going through a door frame. Uh, so whatever happens within that, we, th we think of it as a framing. Okay, framing can also mean that I have half the body uh, maybe looking that way, and my brain's going to kind of fill out the rest. So maybe that's a little too abstract for you guys to think about, but that's a sense of framing. So look, they're framed within the door frame, right? So within this kind of beautiful archway here. Okay, so that's something you can think about. You can maybe in your composition do this. You can bring the snowman really up front here, the hat going up like that. Okay, the cone here, the eyes. So that, in a way, our brain is saying, oh yeah, there's movement going on here. There's something going on here. There's my hat uh, coming around. There's the snowman. And back here is the chalet or something or, you know, and so on. That's going up and we have that. So this is a framing system that you can apply if need be, okay? Okay, I've got something like that. I've got my valleys here and maybe you have a pond with a sign over here so this is a sense of framing our brain right now is doing the is creating the rest okay it's creating this dot 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 like that okay this was a quick quick lesson about framing but this is what you have to do once you have all your elements figured out okay so you went past the lay uh, the drawing creating these objects in 3d then you're bringing them together in your composition, and the composition is about layout. It's about placing these elements in a in a co cohesive manner. Okay, so I'm ending it here. So if you look, obviously one third, one third. There's some depth. There's middle ground, foreground, background. So we're good to go. On this note, we're ending at this point.